Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm here with Rex from Dynamite. What's up, Rex? How you doing? What's going on, Robbie? Hey, did, did you move, like, rooms or something? It looks different behind you. Yeah, I'm in Studio A right now, which was my original studio in this location. And then I created another studio. And then I finally, la like, in the last couple of weeks, kind of cleaned out this room again because it kind of became a junk room. So now God, I'm back God. in Studio A. My initial plan of being able to go back and forth between studios and changing it up every once in a while. There you go. There you go. Makes me feel a little boring over here. Yeah. Plus, I got cool lights in here and stuff, so it's really cool. Gotcha, more, gotcha. more toys, more comics, more things well, to show off. Well, well, talking about studios. So, uh, uh, Alec over at AR Comics is making the big move this week, right? I okay. think it's today. I think they're they're starting a long drive. It was weird, man. At the last show, there was just a blank white wall behind him because he had to clear all that stuff out to get ready for the big move. So uh, looking forward to seeing him come come back to the area. Uh, yeah. Now we just got to get you to move over to this area. And then we could have a banging show over at the brewery, man. Oh, yeah, we sure could. Um, I'll, I'll bring the spam. Having had to, yeah, you should. Having had to have moved several times in the last, like, 10-ish years, like, moving comics and hard covers and trade paperbacks and man that that's a lot that's a lot so just my hats off to period. him yes yeah just moving period so did you catch any of our wednesday show i did not actually bro thanks not. for putting me on the spot mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. gonna have to scold you now <laughs> you you missed the big surprise and we're gonna we're gonna try to do it again and and, and get him on your show but uh uh we had uh, mariano nicieza as our special guest creator on the show and he was actually coloring one of his, uh, well, actually, he ended up coloring two of the remarks uh, with a third that sold that he, he has to take care of. Uh, he may have already done so, but we had him, we had him coloring one of his, his uh, one of the remarks that he did for us was uh, just, you know, basically black and white, uh, you know, uh, 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 a line sketch plus they, they did the inking with the shadows and stuff, but it wasn't colored. So he actually colored it while we were on air. That was really, really cool. That was that was pretty cool to say and and uh, chat with them a little bit. It was a fun show. It really was, man. But we, we got to find a way to do it uh, on Monday nights when you were with us too. Oh, absolutely. On Monday they were talking about that 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 he was going to be there to do that. And I was like, why does yes. all the cool stuff happen on the show with with AR? Like, come on. I tried to get him on Monday, but I ended up not being there. But uh, I tried to get him on Monday, but uh, it was it, he couldn't do it Monday night. There was a, a conflict uh, in schedule. Not, not nothing against Alex, but. Uh, we're also talking about doing the same thing with Ken Hazer, maybe having him come to our offices uh, to do a show. So maybe we can hook that up on a Monday when you're with us, right? That would be really cool, man. See? You know, I'm a big fan of Ken Hazer. Yes. Yeah. Aren't we all? So, and, and the other factor that had to play a role, obviously, Robbie, you know, you know, Alex an Eagles fan, you're a Dallas fan, you know, when, when I had to weigh, weigh it out, you know, I'm sorry, dude, you know, what can you hey, do? Hey man, I, 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 I get it. I respect that, but uh, I'll just say nine and four. So I'm excited about that. So well, the upcoming uh, Eagles Washington game should be interesting since uh, they may have to start re uh, recruiting uh, uh, Pee Wee players because everybody's been knocked out by COVID. <laughs> uh, Heineke's out now. I heard. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know who's going to be tossing the ball for Washington. Uh, Jalen Hurts is still eh, supposedly the ankle thing. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, but I mean, Washington's getting shredded. I mean, you know, by COVID, I I, I don't know who they're going to put out there. Yeah, they're called Doug Williams back. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have a good suggestion, by the way, for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think at this point, you should just have the defense play offense as well. Just keep them out there the whole time because without that defense over these last few weeks, we would have lost a lot of those games. So, so we're not in four, but it's not been pretty. Yeah, you, you're talking about Iron Man football then. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Just have Micah Parsons and, and all of them do it all because it's just, it's insane. That was our first game with all of our key players on defense playing together this year. Like that was the first time they've all played together. They right. were all healthy. And bro, that defense, that won us the game. Yeah, your, your defense definitely looked real good. And then uh, uh, you catch last night's game. Last night's game was a, was a thriller. Oh, uh, I did not catch last night's game. I was yeah. on a uh, live stream with Lost in Comics where we were nominating like best stuff of the year or something oh, like that. I so I missed you. out. I got you. What it went in, it went into OT and the, and the Chiefs pull out another one. But that was that was a 
that was that was quite the shootout, man. That was that was a pretty good, pretty cool game to watch, man. Yeah, I have to check um, the highlights out on that one. Here's something crazy. How about this? What about Urban Meyer getting yes, fired? I was going to bring that up. <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm surprised it took this long. I I, I think you know, for, well, the Jags are just awful. Okay, I mean the owner Con. I mean, you need to know something about the sport. Okay, I mean, you know, he, he's he's and, and and Jerry Jones. I I'm, oh sorry, Jerry Jones, unfortunately. Thinks he knows the game, but doesn't. But but Khan is even worse. I mean, you know, because Khan really doesn't know anything about the game. And and you look at the history of college coaches coming in the NFL. There have been very few. I mean, very few. I mean, a handful that have been successful, like like uh, uh, P. Carroll, like uh, 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 Jim Harbaugh yeah. uh, before he went back to Michigan. I mean, it's been very few coaches that make that transition. And and Urban was a hot mess even before, dude. Even before the season started, he was like. You know, putting himself in the you know in the papers, and I'm starting to read articles today about it. And it's just wow, what a toxic environment. It, it would be really cool. I would I would find it hilarious if if the Jags can can manage to win three more games before the end of the season, because then he then the the assistant coach would have would have uh, topped uh, Urban Meyer's entire win win record for the entire season. I but, uh, I heard that their percentage is like they were like. They were like favored to lose the game, and then they fired Urban Meyer. Now they're actually favored to win the game by a little bit, or something I, like that. He, 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 that guy created such a dysfunctional environment, and I feel bad for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, you know, they they, they pretty much burned through his rookie season. I, you know, I, I don't he was supposed to be the rookie to watch this year, right? You know, I I don't blame it on him. I think next year you're going to see something different. I, I I think that that you know you see a lot of uh, uh, of of high draft pick quarterbacks come out of college and turn out to be a bust. I mean, you, there's so many of them. Uh, uh, I remember one guy, this maybe even way back before your time, this guy, Todd Marinovich. Okay. And he was supposed to be God's gift. I think he was within, within the top five uh, drafted that year. And the guys turned out to be a horrific nightmare. I mean, but I don't think that's Trevor Lawrence. I think, I think, unfortunately, he needed a better coach. He needed, you know, I mean, look at Mac Jones over, over on the Patriots, you know, and yeah. I, don't, I don't think Mac Jones has the talent that Trevor Lawrence has, you know, but if you, you're in the right environment with the right coaching staff, you know, they can nurture, nurture that guy into, in, into being something. I mean, you know, but they, they just bungled it. I mean, on every level, I mean, yeah, come on. Urban Meyer just seemed clueless this entire season, like just clueless yeah. man. And, and I know, you know, you got to respect him for what he was able to do, his success in college football, right? And I tell people, because down here in Alabama, like, college football is the big thing. And a lot of people are like, you'll hear things like, oh, I don't like the NFL. They're all about the money. The college players play for heart. That's not really true either. But I tell people, it's like the difference between college football and the NFL. Yo, that's like, there's such a huge difference, man. Like, you watch I that's why I love college football. I'll watch it all day on Saturday, right? And then the first game, first play I see on Sunday, that's when you're like, oh, so this is how you play football, like professionally. Well, you know, I, I think uh I think I, I read an interview with Jimmy Johnson after after this whole Urban Meyer thing broke. And you know, what was interesting is is you know, hey, Jimmy, Jimmy was no picnic when he coached, okay. You know, which I find ironic that he's saying Urban was a tire. But I think I think he said something that was really important is that that you have to, when you transition from college, and, and he was another one that was successful in college and then obviously su successful uh, in the NFL. When you make that transition, you have to understand how the nature of the relationship is going to change. And when you're a college coach, you have young kids far away from home, you know, and already under an enormous amount of, of pressure. And he says, there you can be a father figure. You get to the NFL, these are grown men who make a whole boatload of money. OK, and you're not going to be able to treat them or bully them or scare them the way that you can a college player. And and then the other thing is, is in college, success is determined more heavily on recruiting. You know, there's such a you see such a disparity between teams, you know, skill levels between teams that recruiting becomes more essential. And the NFL, it, it, it's the whole the whole process is really controlled by a draft you know, by, by salary caps, you know, that type of thing. So, and, and the skill levels are so much closer in the NFL because, you know, in order to get in an NFL, everybody's, you know, everybody was a stud in college. So I, I, and I don't think urban urban Meyer was able to make that transition. I think the guys, and you know, personally, to be honest with you, I think the guy's an ass and he's so arrogant that he didn't think he thought he could bring, 
you know, and, and trust me, this is this is a, a fan of a team that that went through some horrific uh, college coaching, uh, the, the whole Chip Kelly thing, you know, the, the, the rapid uh, uh, play calls, you know, quick, quick, quick. OK, it's like, dude, you can't do that. OK, eventually these guys get gas. So so when it doesn't work and your offense is gas and then your defense is out there all the time, everybody's gas. You know, it, it never really worked, you know, and you just can't. I just don't think you can bring that college formula into the NFL. They've seen it all. They've done it all. You know, you got what you got, you know, yeah. and every and it's faster and it's harder and, and everything else, you know. One thing about Meyer this year, though, is it was always entertaining. I remember early on, he has a, there was a press conference probably after their third loss or something, and he's just like, it's just like playing Alabama every week. Like, yeah. what did you think, bro? Did like Because that's another yeah. thing about college is you get exactly. your, your schedule is cushioned. With like yeah. some easy, easy teams to beat. You know what I'm saying? You don't get that in the NFL. That's why like, you'll see crazy things. You'll see teams like like that are that are supposed to be terrible all of a sudden just crush a supposedly good team one week and then it all changes back the yeah, next week. Uh, you know? Exactly. That and, and, and you know that that's something that, that the NFL as a whole has tried to tried to to do since the dynasty years from from the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, yeah. they were they were they were definitely losing viewership because every year it was the Dallas Dallas Cowboys and, and Pittsburgh Steelers in the Super Bowl. You know, after a while, there are only two cities watching. The rest of us don't care anymore. You know, um, so they try to cr create that 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 kind of of, of equity amongst teams, you know, parity. But I, I just you know, it, but even beyond that, you know, I mean, Chip Kelly was a horrible horrible NFL coach, but but Urban brought all this other crap. You know, that was the other problem. It, you know, he brought all this other crap, you know, pushing your, you know, your assistants under the bus, pushing your, your, your rookie quarterback under the bus. It's like, dude, that is the opposite of trying to develop your, your young, you know, rookie quarterback. Yeah. You know, it, it was just, it was, it was definitely a hot mess, man. And, yeah. Then you had that whole situation where he didn't go back yeah. with the team, wound up getting caught at the strip club or something like that. Actually, it was his own restaurant bar. <laughs> you know, or something, but you know, he was grinding with some, some woman that was not obviously not his wife. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, I think he would have been fired sooner, but he was owed, he's owed so much money, but I think now they can fire him for cause because he kicked the kicker. Okay. So that, that, you know, that, that could be once that came out, you know, that the whole, the whole uh, firing thing came real quick, I think, because the lawyer said, Hey, we can fire him for cause and I ha have to pay him all that, pay out all that money now. And there you go. There you yeah. go. All right. And just to remind everyone, we will, of course, be announcing the winner of the contest yes. from Monday night, right? Yes. Yes. We'll be doing that. And if you comment on this video, you're entered to win the contest that we'll announce the winner on Monday yes. show. Correct. Yes. With 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 Robbie's uh, random wheel of ridiculousness. Yes. I like I like that, man. So, yeah, we, we, we like to talk about football and sports, and we also like to talk about comic books. So me and Rex do a show on Monday night at The Experience. Link in the description below. It's always fun. He wasn't there this week. You were missed, but we still had a good, fun show because of the chat, because of the people involved. So we always like to give back a little bit. We got some great books coming up this week. I'm really excited to have you back, Rex. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for missing me. It's always nice to be missed. Um, but I had no doubt that... <clears throat> Amy and John, we're going to do fine in my absence. Uh, you know, uh, again, all, all I bring is a lot of uh, a lot of banter. Um, but yeah, I mean, you touched on a very good point. I mean, our viewers engaging us in the chat, that's what really makes the show. I mean, you know, our, our Monday and Wednesday shows um, completely unscripted. We're, 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 we're liable to talk about anything under the sun, whatever comes to mind. Uh, and interspersed in there, we have some uh, some great deals on comics. Um, I know that, uh, as usual, we, we bring the, uh, dynamite 10 pack, the readers pack, uh, you know, just 10 random dynamite titles. I bring it up every show, um, and $40 retail for $5. So 50 cents a book, essentially, um, great way to kind of get started with new titles. If you haven't, um, you know, very obviously low risk at 50 cents a copy. Oh yeah, um, for sure. We always try to bring CGCs. So uh, uh, the CGCs are usually 9.6 or 9.8 guaranteed. Uh, well, the only time we actually get a little bit lower in grade on that is if it turns out to be a, a vintage book that's been graded, you know. Uh, so so those will, those will sometimes vary, but we try to bring key, key titles and things, things of that nature. Um, we've been doing statues a lot. Sta the statues have been really, really popular. Uh, so we're trying to make sure we have a statue every show. 
I hope we don't run out. You know, we're, you know <laughs> I was told by by inventory control that you know, hey, you know, well, how many statues do you think we guys you, we got back here? So <laughs> I'm hoping we don't run out, but we have a, we do have a dawn statue that that we'll, we'll be showing on Monday night, and uh, um, uh, I think it's based on Joe Scott Campbell's art. Uh, J Scott Campbell's art. I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure it is though. Uh, no, no. Actually, I think it's uh, it's Lisner. Lisner, right? Yeah. Yeah, my bad. Okay. Yeah, uh, Joseph Michael uh, Lindsay's uh, uh, Dawn statue, um, and those always do really, really well. Um, not sure if I, I'm going to bring the coin set back. Um, I'm running low on those, but uh, I do know there were some requests, and we were giving them out as prizes at one point. Yeah, yeah, we were. The, by the way, the statues. Somebody once again snuck out Monday show with an incredible deal on a Red Sonia statue. Like they get that for so cheap, so. Definitely got to be there, not just for everything, but those statues, man, they, they go for really good prices. And, and there's a lot of bids on them, too, man. Yeah, usually usually you're going to – somebody's going to gonna snake it uh, uh, under under retail. Um, I, I Very rarely it has it gone over retail, uh, but there's always a lot of action on it. So for, for people that may not have viewed our show on Mondays, uh, we have two types of items. Um, one is a buy it now claim. So we'll throw a price out there, and the first person to claim it gets it. And then we have the best offer of the night, which is uh, uh, basically a kind of a bidding format. So uh, we'll start at a price and then then people will make claims and offers. And the person with the highest offer at the end of the night, uh, so our show is 6 to 8 uh, Eastern. So by 7.55, we throw that end line in there, you know, just to keep it fair. And we do ask our viewers sometimes, you know, if, if you're done bidding, you know, just kind of just let us know by putting in the chat. Uh, you know, you fold, uh, just kind of keep it, uh, keep it friendly and stuff. But, but, uh, so those are the two types of items that we have, we have sign books. We have, uh, and I mentioned this remarks, which I'm a big fan of. I know you, you've become a big fan of them as well. And, uh, not sure when we're going to hook it up, but, you know, we talked about having, uh, last, uh, Wednesday having, uh, uh Mariana Nicieza coloring right on air. Uh, we're talking about trying to, to get, and you know, we're huge fans. So John and I are real excited. Um, having Ken Hazer on, uh, bring, you know, perhaps bring them into our, our offices and having them sketch live, you know, sketch something for us live during the stream. Um, and, and, you know, I've known Mariano a long time, I, but I never act and you know, I knew he was creator, obviously, but I never really actually saw him draw or sketch or color anything. So it was really kind of cool because he was sitting like right here next to me. Well, you know, so I'm able to kind of lean over and see him, see him do it. And it, it, to me, it's always an amazing, it's an amazing skill because I don't have it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to watch somebody else do that and, and to create it right before your eyes. And, and, uh, you know, we had, uh, Amy helping us out with her, her phone. So we could close in and see exactly him, you know, coloring in, in the, uh, the remark, but, but that, that was super cool. So, and we always take suggestions. So when, you, you know, if you're watching our show, Contribute in the chats. Let us know if there's something you want to see more of. If there's something you want to see less of. If there's something you haven't seen yet and you you would like to see it, if we can get our hands on it, we'll certainly bring it on the air. Very cool. Very cool. Um, that's definitely worth watching on the replay, the uh, the coloring by Nicieza there. I'm excited. Yes. I'm going to go back and check that out too. Um, got any big plans for the holiday? We got Christmas. No, not up. really. I'm going to stay local. So, uh, you know, I, I especially these days with travel and stuff, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I didn't enjoy flying this time of year or around Thanksgiving before the pandemic. Now I have even less desire, right. um, hate sitting in traffic. You know, most of my family is probably up, if not California, they're up north of here. So the, the dreaded, you know, the dreaded, uh, uh, New York throughway, uh, the cross Bronx, this is, uh, you know, it, that's bad enough on a Wednesday, yeah. let alone during the holidays. So, so yeah, yeah just staying local this year. So not, not really doing anything. How about you? Uh, it's just staying local. <clears throat> Pretty much all my family's here. So, oh, they so got, like, yeah, we got things we're doing, I guess, on Christmas Eve. And and then the rest of the week <clears throat> or the rest of that weekend, I'll just enjoy my time off, get caught up on some comics, there you maybe go. do a little, you know, caught up on some projects, things like that. So And, and uh, Matrix, Matrix uh, Resurrections coming out on the 22nd. I know I I the other night I I, I went ahead and, and tried to watch the whole trilogy again in preparation uh you know matrix reloaded some some of the some of the uh uh the, the cg i don't know man it was just you know so i ended up falling asleep and waking up 
uh, when um, um, the third Matrix movie was on about midway through. Um, you know, it fell asleep, but, you know, for, for reload, it just couldn't, couldn't take it. But, but I'm excited. It seems, and, and, um, the, uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, uh, Morpheus is going to make an appearance. So nice. they, yeah, they dropped that in the last trailer. So he, he is in the movie in some capacity. You know, I, I am exactly so what. excited for the matrix. Like I, I love the trilogy and the animatrix and the comics. Like I, I love all three of the films. Reloaded is actually one of my favorites. I think that freeway scene is like some of the that, best. Is, that, that was a super cool scene. Yes. Yeah, but that's that, an that, amazing scene. Yeah. But that one scene in, in the playground where he's, he's fighting all the Smiths. Yeah. Even at the time that didn't look that great. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like You're that right. was, that is the bit, like, I get it. I get the idea of the, the virus infecting and duplicating and replicating and all that. But, like, it does it does not look quite right. And they well, that's the early Neo. in that 3D modeling of people stuff, right? That's yeah, kind of like, it, yeah. It was Neo that, that was worse than anything else, you know? When that scene where he gets up and a, he's, exactly, he's spinning yeah. around with his, yeah. Yeah, and you're looking like, oh, that doesn't look real. It looks like a video game. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, but exactly. I say that's a, like the a lot of movies now. They're so CG heavy. They rely on it so much that a lot of these movies, I think, look like video games or they get really muddy towards the end when it becomes a big CG, CG fest, yeah. you know, at the end. Yeah. No, I, I, I think Matrix Revolutions was 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 better. But a lot of that took place in Zion and, and, you know, kind of, you know, not the Matrix itself. Which I understand, and, you know, and then and then you had the death of the Oracle, the actress who played the Oracle, which was a little weird too. You know, you, you had to adjust to that. Yeah. Uh, but but no, I'm like you, dude. I'm I'm like you. I mean, I, I I was. I remember a friend told me when the Matrix first came out, I hadn't seen it. He said, "Dude, you got to watch this movie." You know, I'm like, "Well, what's so special about it, dude? You just got to watch it. Just watch it. You'll you'll see what I mean." And I watched the first time. I was sold. I was I was what a concept. I always hear people, you know, talk about people that were like, say, teenagers when the first Star Wars movie came out. And they, yeah. they talk about like, you don't understand how big of a deal it was, how that blew our minds. For me, my teenage years, it was The Matrix. Like The Matrix came out my senior year of high school and that movie just game changed everything cinematically. It did. It did. I mean, and, and the concept as a whole was what was so, so amazing, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, so definitely looking forward to it. Uh, and the way that they were able to market that first Matrix film without telling you what the movie was about. Yes. Like nowadays, they just give you. I'm I'm surprised that everybody's like avoid spoilers on Spider Man. I'm like, like don't we already know pretty much everything that's going to happen? Probably no. not. But yeah, I know no, you're that, not a big theater right. guy. You're not a big theater guy, right? But are you going to go no. see Spider Man? Uh, when it when it starts streaming. Okay. Okay. I've been told. So I, I uh, uh, a couple of people I work with, uh, you know, uh, I, I think I told you the story. They had an Oculus delivered to the to the office to have a computer set up. I've been told now you can watch movies on the Oculus, and it's like you're watching it in a theater with an IMAX. So now I have no purpose to go. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I uh, I'm going uh, actually later this afternoon to go watch it. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to check it out. I think. Uh... I'm excited. I know that this is like one of the hypest movies and it's nice to see people get excited yes. to go to the theater again and watch a movie. And there's a lot of hype on it. People are like, Oh, it was, it's selling out here. It's, it's not going to be available there. Um, and I appreciate the hype for it, but still, I'm just like, y'all man. But the next week's the matrix. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I hope they don't I, mess that one up. I don't know. Really Amy signing here, something to me. And I'm almost certain it's related to movie theater experience. Go ahead, Amy. The Spider-Man movie's crazy. That's all I'm going to say. So Amy has apparently already seen it. Okay? I'm not surprised. So, so oh, come on. Come on, Amy. Come on. Come on. Go sit in the chair. Come on. Oh, so, I'm allowed to guest star? Of course you are. You're always allowed <laughs> to guest star. Robbie, are you can, cool with that? Yeah, Robbie. Are Absolutely. you cool with that, Robbie? Of course. I see. So, so here's our resident movie reviewer. Okay, she is the official Dynamite Entertainment movie reviewer. I hear so, news and my ears perk up. I'm like, yes. what are y'all so, saying? So, so everybody understands that, that Amy and I have this ongoing debate, okay? As Robbie, even Robbie knows, I am not a movie theater guy. Even before the pandemic, I am not a movie theater guy. I just, you know, whatever, you know. Amy 
is absolutely a movie theater person. Okay, so we always have this debate about because I'll wait until it streams. She'll go right out like the day the movie opens, or you know, if it has an IMAX. This feature. is the movie you have to see like before everybody else does, or you're gonna get spoiled. Okay, <laughs> so obviously, Rob, you're gonna some have some of good us. Time. Some of us day, Rex. Right? Some of us Rex don't like spoilers, so like. I mean, I'm a I'm a movie theater person too. I like going to get my cherry coke and my Twizzlers and all that jazz. Well, well, Amy is telling you that this is this is out of this world. This movie, yeah. So you're gonna have a good time, all right. So, so she she thought it was great, but then then she also thought Blade Runner. What was it? What number was it? Twenty forty five or twenty forty nine? Twenty forty nine. She also thought Blade Blade Runner twenty forty nine was a good movie. I don't know. Okay. See, I didn't watch that one initially in theaters, and I, I just watched it like a month or two ago. Yeah, nine I, hours of your life, you're never gonna get back. I was kind of disappointed, honestly, because I'm a huge Agreed Blade Runner. Fan. Okay. okay. <laughs> he loves the director uh, who also directed Dune. Uh, Dune, though. Uh, did he really, yeah, yeah. Um, love Dune. I, I did. I absolutely love love his. See, we his, can agree on that. Yes. Blade Runner 2049. Oh my God! I want, I want, I want my life. I want those hours of my life back, man. Drag, drag it and drag <laughs> it. I'm like, uh, is something interesting going to happen anytime soon here, or what? Yeah, you are being a little bit of a drama queen about it, though, Rex. To be thank honest, thank you, Robin. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so, Amy, so, out of uh, five, you digs. What would you give Spider-Man: Far From Home, uh, or is it No Way Home? No Way Home. Yeah. Well, while, while I still have to like. I still have to rearrange my ranking of all the Spider-Man movies. It's it's up there. It's like tied with Spider-Verse. So if that that's a five, this is probably also a five. So it's uh -huh. I recommend everyone like see it as fast as they can before it's spoiled. So do, do, does Sony send you a check every month, or what's the deal with this? <laughs> if, if, I, if they did, if, that'd be great. If they don't, you should call them. Hey, I'm pumping your movies left and right here. All right, so they're you have you're better than me, better at this job, better at doing that than I am. Uh, okay. Well, I think your enthusiasm cuts across uh, pretty genuinely. So, so for those, so you heard it here first, okay? Uh, Amy's movie review on Spider Man No Way Home is two thumbs up, two web shooters up, right? Web shooters up. Web shooters up. There you go. <laughs> So, awesome. I'm really pumped to check it out now. A lot of my friends are, saw it last night and they, they really dug it. So. so I'm excited to see it too as soon as it starts streaming. Yeah. I'm no, really su no surprises. Like, once we're off camera, I might just say something. I might just say something to you. Just, just, to, okay. <laughs> just <laughs> to take you off. That would make it Friday, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robbie, is it time to, to run the random wheel of ridiculousness or... Yes, yes, and it's officially it's it's Rock and Robbie's rant. Wait, I forgot. Oh, whatever. Revolutionary <laughs> randomizer of ridiculousness. That's what it is. And let's hit the you button. You have to email me that. I'm too old to remember all that. Hey, apparently, me too. <laughs> uh, Dave Cerrone is the winner. Dave Cerrone. Unfortunately, Dave. today's prize is the Red Sonia 45th anniversary promo card and the Vampirella Lucio per Perillo. Okay, collector's trading card, uh, uh, exclusive premium. The problem is I'm pretty sure Dave already has both of these cards, but we'll send him a couple more because Dave obviously has been a very, very, uh, uh, a regular viewer of ours, a uh, very loyal supporter. And we appreciate Dave, uh, you know, guys like Dave. Um, and, you know, he's also helpful. Sometimes he helps us with the show. If I don't know the dimensions on the, mm -hmm. on the statue, Dave will like look it up It'll for us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So Dave, congratulations, buddy. Uh, we'll get it out to, you know, in one of your packages there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so listen, have a great time at the movie, bud. Oh, I'm excited, man. I will. I will. Like I said, yeah. cherry Cokes, Twizzlers and, and some Spider-Man. And I'm going to be like eight years old again, even though when I was eight years old, there was no Spider-Man movie, but whatever. <laughs> You're gonna just, we'll it. just say Batman. I don't think okay. there was cherry Coke either, was there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cherry Coke's been around my friend for a while. Well, so. well, I don't know about the one manufactured by Coke. It used to be they, they'd have to put a little uh, 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 cherry flavoring in it. That's how cherry Cokes were made back way back in the day. 
Now, I remember getting cherry Cokes at like restaurants or whatever where they would put the cherries in it. But yeah, the 80s cherry Coke, that's like one of my favorite cans because they would have it was like a white can with like uh, like red stripes on it. And it was a really cool can for cherry Coke back then. Well, there but you go. I'm nostalgic for for branding, apparently. Yeah, from yeah, the 80s. yeah. <laughs> you're the cherry Coke historian. Just, just look friend. at my IG feed and you'll be like, this dude's got a problem, man. <laughs> it's all that nostalgia driven stuff. Start drinking water. Yeah, right. I mean, I do. I do drink water, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, but, uh, very excited. Yeah. Um, if you want to enter the next contest, just comment on this video right now. Like, just comment on the video. We'll announce that winner on Monday. Looking forward to Monday's show, Rex. Yeah, me too. And, uh, yeah, definitely uh, remember to hit thumbs up, subscribe uh, to Robbie's channel if you, if you haven't done so already. Um, and yeah, definitely uh, contribute to the chat so you can be entered into drawing that we're going to have on Monday on Monday's show from eight uh, six to eight uh, Eastern time. Uh, even just say hi, or even better, if you have already seen uh, Spider Man No Way Home, uh, you know don't no spoilers, but let us know yeah, you liked you it, you didn't either. like it, whatever, and, that, and you're automatically entered into the contest. And just to remind everybody, uh, we have... Uh, Let me know if you agree with me about Blade Runner 2049. There you go. Yes, yes, that's another thing. Did you like Blade Runner 2049? Actually, that's a more interesting question than Spider-Man No Way Home. I think everybody's going to say... Probably, I'll ask it. you one day if anyone so, said anything. So if you want we'll to do. be entered, you know, you just have to say even say hi in the chats. But if you want to be entered for the drawing and make it interesting, let us know what your review of Blade Runner 2049 is. And we'll find out. And Robbie will let us know on Monday what, how the results came in. Uh, I'd be interested to hear. Yeah, I'm interested to hear that too. All right, y'all. We'll see you guys on Monday night. Rex, Amy, thank you for being here. This has been thank a pleasure. You, and I'm going to go. Movies. Exactly. I'm going out. Station, y'all.